quarter cup of marinara, quarter cup of diced tomato, parsley, honey, two tablespoons of green onion, quarter cup of sliced red onion, shaved garlic, quarter cup of butter, salt, pepper, quarter cup of white wine, Dijon mustard, Japanese panko breadcrumb, chiffonade basil, a half a stick of melted butter, and a New Zealand rack of lamb. I'm Chef Robert Hess and we're coming from you at my third restaurant, the Skinny's restaurant in Clearwater, Florida. And you're watching Never Trust a Skinny Chef, the show that teaches you, you better go to your restaurant and find out who's cooking your food. And if he's a fat guy, you better be sure the food is banging. Alright, today we're going to make my Dijon crusted rack of lamb with a traditional Italian ratatouille. Alright, and I ain't got no little rat under my hat. I know how to cook this junk. Alright, so we're going to jump right into it. We got a beautiful New Zealand rack of lamb that's been butchered. And we have the bones have been uh, clean and stripped down. They've been French. What that means is basically the bones are stripped down with all the meat. And you got that beautiful rack set. Now, for a guy of my size, this will probably feed, this will definitely feed uh, two people, all right? You give them, there's uh, eight bones to a rack, you give them four bones, but hey, you're cooking with a fat guy, so you know we're getting the whole thing. All right, so what we're gonna do is, you got this rack of uh, lamb here, this beautiful rack of lamb. What you wanna do is you wanna make the, the crust. Now, what is panko breadcrumb? Panko breadcrumb is rice flour that's been hydrated with water or marin or sake and they, they uh, sheet it out like a paste, they roll it out really thin, uh, let it dry out and they break it up like cracker and this is what you get, you get panko breadcrumb, right? So, and basically it's a, a, a lighter version of a traditional breadcrumb, okay? It comes from Japan, this stuff is awesome on fried mushrooms, fried cheese and you know how I like fried cheese. So what you want to do is you want to season this. You want to go ahead and grab the panko, put a little salt in it, a little pepper in it, all right? And then, my favorite and your favorite, butter. Make sure you're using high fat, salted butter, all right? You put this on anything from popcorn to my stuff right here. Put it right in the panko, put it right in there. And what you want to do is you want to toss it up, all right? And now what you're doing is you're coating this panko. So the panko is nice and flavorful and also it'll brown up nice and uh, uh, golden brown when you throw it in the oven, okay? And it'll also adhere to all the meat, all right? Throw a little parsley in there for a little of color, right? Toss that around, set that to the side. Next, you want to go ahead and grab, uh, I always like to, when I season meats or put uh, mustards on meats or put any coatings on the meat, I have a separate plate so it doesn't touch the surface. It just gets right onto the meat and go right from the plate to the grill or plate to the pan. All right, so you go ahead and you have this plate, all right? Take, never put dry uh, ingredients on, uh, on the meat. You wanna go ahead and always start with a little olive oil, okay? You wanna massage it in there, all right? And remember, if she's a redhead, what do you gotta do to it? Smack it, you smack because you love it, right? That's what you do, you rub it in there, you massage it, give it a little back rub, right? And then what you wanna do is you add a little salt, right? Put a little salt on there, a little pepper on there, you flip it over because you don't want to forget the back side. Oh. So then you go ahead and you give a little oil on the back, right? Some pepper, right? Some salt, put that in there. Now what I do is I take a little white wine, I pour a little white wine right over the top, okay? Put it in there, massage it in, okay? Next, Dijon mustard. Take Dijon mustard, and you go ahead and you're going to make the coating. Basically, just going to paint it on there. There's no rules to it. There's no uh, specific way. It's just going to add a really nice peppery flavor, a nice mustard flavor to the meat. Also, it's going to act as a glue to hold on to the uh, panko, okay? So you go ahead and you add that down, right? Okay? Next thing what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to sear it mustard side down. Now, why would you do that? You want to sear the meat, you want to add a little brownness to the, uh, to the, to the meat, and also make that um, mustard a little caramelized, okay? So what we're going to do is put a little of the oil on a flat top. If you don't have a flat top, you can go ahead and use a, uh, uh, use a cast iron pan. And what you do is, you slap that right down on the top, 
All right, and you're gonna hear that, that sizzle, and we're gonna start building leather, uh, layers of flavor, okay? So what you want to do is you want to flip it. You see you got that nice brown caramelization. This is a two-step uh, cooking process. What we're doing is we're sealing the mustard into the, the meat, into the lamp, locking in the juices, locking in the flavor, and then we're going to roast it in the oven after we panko crust it. Take that plate that I told you about half handy. All right? And you're going to bring it back over. Next step you're going to do is you're going to add a little bit more mustard, okay? You want to add a little bit more mustard. Put it right over in the cooked area. Okay, and this is going to act as the glue, all right, to your um, to your lamp. Okay, you want to get the back side of it. Now you can do this with prime rib. You can do this with uh, uh, any kind of steaks. You'd be lovely with this. Uh, what next thing you want to do? You just want to dip that right into the panko. Dip it right into the panko, right? And you want to get that nice crust over the top of it. Pack it in, All right? Beautiful. You want to get all areas, okay? Remember, there's no rules in it. This is pretty much awesome and done, okay? We want, now we're gonna take this, all right? This beautiful crusted, all right? We're gonna take the scissor plate, all right? If you don't have a scissor plate, just take one of your non-stick uh, omelet pans, take the rubber handle off, and then just throw that in the oven. Put a little oil at the bottom so it doesn't move or burn. Okay, well there you go. That's our uh, Dijon crusted panko lamb. All right, and what we want to do is just throw that in a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes for perfect medium rare. So right now we got the lamb in the oven. It's finishing, we're gonna pull that out at a good medium rare. So what we wanna do is jump right into the traditional Italian ratatouille. Now what's ratatouille? Ratatouille is basically sauteed summer vegetables with tomato product, okay, and basil and herbs and Italian flavors in there. So what we got is, I have a little bit of red onion sauteing with some sliced garlic, get nice and brown, all right? Once that comes up, I'm gonna slice add zucchini and yellow squash, all right? Add some yellow squash right in there. Okay. Give it a nice sauce. Now we don't want to overcook the vegetables. We want to saute, and saute is a French word for jumping out of the pan. And what that means is you start with a hot pan. You're always going to have successful uh, vegetables. Some vegetables you have to blanch first, which means put them in salted hot water, pull them out, put them in, shock them into ice water. That way you saute them up. But these are nice and tender, and you can just start with that, okay? So the next step, after this point, is you come in here, and you can see that they're, they're starting to get brown on the edges. And you want to do is you want to deglaze with a little white wine. And you can use any white wine, but what we, we like to do is you always cook what you drink, all right? So put a little white wine on a quarter cup, all right? All right, and you're gonna deglaze. And the deglaze is another fancy word for getting the bond off the bottom of the pan. And that's all those little salt, pepper bits and all the sugars from the product come and releasing out of the bottom of the pan, all right? At this point, you want to add that diced tomato, all right? Okay? Fresh basil. Okay? Now, this is our, this is Spaghetti's Restaurant's house marinara. We make this marinara fresh in all of our pastas. This marinara, very simple and easy to make. It's probably a 10 ingredient in marinara. You go ahead, this is about half a cup. You're going to eyeball it, put another quarter cup of that in there. Okay. Finish it up with a little green onion. All right. Now we want to season everything: salt, pepper. We give it a nice little toss. All right. There you go. That's some 
classic ratatouille. And what you want to do is the longer it sits there, it'll go ahead and uh, meld with all those flavors. And the marinara will start breaking down the, the toughness of the vegetables. But you don't want to go too far because then you're going to have you're going to have a big plate of mush. So you want to make sure that everything stays pork tender and nice. And that's the huge testament of a chef to go ahead and make sure when he knows how to pull it. But one of the tricks at is, is at home, anybody's a chef. If you make something delicious for yourself or a family member and they love it, consider yourself a chef because you just created something. All right, guys, we go ahead and pulled out the lamb out of the oven. We let it rest because we want to let the juices not just get scared and fly out of the meat. We want a perfect medium rare. We went ahead and let it rest for a good five, ten minutes, all right, to set it to the side. Now, temperature meats, even when they say you want to make sure food is hot, 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 listen, when you're dealing with meat and you're dealing with beef and lamb, room temperature and warm is the very way to go. You want the outside hot, the inside warm to the tongue and perfect medium rare. We also had finished up this beautiful ratatouille. And you see how it's still got its body, doesn't look mushad. It's everything's beautiful with the tomatoes and the garlic and the fresh basil. This dish is awesome. You can put this easy with chicken, pork chops, lamb, beef, whatever you want. It's a nice, light summer dish, okay? Now we're gonna show you how to plate it up. All right, the first thing we wanna do is you wanna take this lamb and you wanna carve it down. Now I said this is a whole rack. There's eight bones on the rack, but a single serving would be four bones. But since you're messing with Big Daddy, we're going with the full rack. So what you want to do is you grab in the middle, you go right down the gully, okay? And now look at that, okay? Look at that. Now that's a perfect medium rare, right? So you go ahead and you cross the bones, all right? The, the food talks to you when you cook, all right? It'll tell you where, where it can move and where it can't move and, when it, and how it cooks when it's sizzling and sauteing. It'll tell you when it's burnt. It'll tell you when it's, it's, it's not happening. And like the food will always speak to you as long as you're listening, okay? So remember, anybody can cook as long as you have the passion to do so. So what you want to do is you take this ratatouille, all right? And you go right to the middle of the plate, right into the center of the plate, real rustic, okay? Put that right there, all right? Right in the center, all right? Next you want to do is you grab that lamb that you crossed on the board. Don't cross it on the plate because you don't want to go ahead and have all those drippings and things on your plate. All right, so you put that right there. All right, all right. Then go ahead and clean up any little thing you got. All right, so what you do is you take this farmer's honey that you can find anywhere and you just take it with a spoon and you just lightly drizzle right over the top of that lamb. All right, back and forth. Make sure you get all that. Make sure it's nice and golden, all right? Perfect, all right? Finish it with a little bit of parsley around the rim, all right? And there you go, man. It's Dijon panko crusted uh, New Zealand rack of lamb with some traditional Italian ratatouille, all right? From your kitchen to mine, live big and eat big, and always remember, never trust a skinny chef.